So you came out and said some important things about China's involvement with the Democrat Party. But suddenly we're seeing society changing against Republicans and conservatives. How much of that do you think is connected to Chinese influence? So I think um, a lot of like the entirety of Congress, like I think more than half of them are involved on a business per, on a business side with China. And look at Mitch McConnell's wife. Like look at all of this incredible corruption. And every company, like even honestly, even Trump at one point was considering doing business in China because of the profits but he never did because he wanted to be America first before he ran for presidency. And like, how come all of these people in Congress, Senate, House, Rep, um, Speaker, like they all are multimillionaires, billionaires, and we the people are suffering. So um, obviously our tax dollars are not going to the right place. They're not putting Americans first. Okay, but and so you're, you're, you're wearing a Trump hat now. The idea of Trump or MAGA hats, it not only in society in the streets, uh, but but in the professional world, yeah, you know, they're, they're they're driving past us. Even a, a little girl, ten years old, uh, nine years old, she's giving you the, the thumbs down. What about how, how is discrimination now creeping in towards Republicans? So they're definitely trying to based on. So there's this quote that um, goes, "There are red ants and black ants in a jar." and they're fighting because the jar is shaking. But you have to wonder, who is shaking the jar? Go find and safe space! That's the media, that's politics, and that's how they profit off of our suffering and our division. But the problem is, the people in the hands of all this is China, and they're trying to take over the world on a global scale, and they don't want America to unite left and right and realize that the corruption is in the government, in the deep state, and in China, and all of these external third party, third party country interests. And as a result, we suffer at the hands of the government and the deep state. But how can, here we have uh, all the, the local news, the network news, how can they all discriminate in a coordinated way uh, by a dic dictum from China. Where's uh, where's China's influence in North America? China's influence? Yeah. How, does, so, how does China well, influence starts, the press in America? It starts with censorship, how big tech censors Facebook, Twitter. Um, what country do we live in besides a third world country where you can ban and censor the president of the United States by a privately owned company that has no say in politics and should not have any political interests. They're, they are a private company and they should be open to the public. Um, I think that is something, only third world countries burn down the American flag and that's what we saw over the summer and the media and the socialist Democrats have defended them continuously labeling it as peaceful protests. But when a couple of Trump supporters and patriots go into the Capitol building, which by the way, it's this is our house, it's our building, it's our tax dollars, and no one was trying to threaten or hurt anyone. They were coming in peacefully, unarmed, um, with simply asking people to make a little bit of a change and avoid all of this incredible corruption. And, you know, one, one lady who was an Air Force vet was shot by the Tigers, cops because she didn't see Tigers, space, that she didn't see that there were guns in the back but everyone else backed we away love you. we love you we'll help you find you know, the country you want to go to venezuela yes. do you want to go to china where do you want to go go to fucking china bro you. if you don't like this country you can fucking leave we love you it, it, it's like it, they start at the education system too like Right now, in elementary school, in, Tex in Austin, Texas, which is, I know, it's liberal for Texas, they're telling kids to, li to only label one choice that Biden is already the president. They're trying to erase history. They're trying to erase the fact that this happened. They're trying to erase Trump and our rebellion, honestly. This is, this is the second American revolution. Because really... Every big empire lasts only 250 years and our time is almost up and if we don't drain the swamp and get rid of this deep state and these other interests that don't help anyone, in, like left or right, they don't help we the people of the United States, there won't be an America. And I'm not saying that as a threat, I'm saying that if Joe Biden 
actually took over. We are owned. We are the. We become the United States of China. We're no longer. America will cease to exist, and that is ex exactly why North Korea is so threatened, and they're threatening that if Trump doesn't become president, um, they're gonna like go tough on nuclear because he knows the president of North, the whatever dictator of North Korea knows that if if Biden becomes president, we become China, and if China owns us, they can easily get into North Korea. They're trying to take over Taiwan, they're taking away freedom from Hong Kong, and honestly, there are Trump rallies all across the world, in Nigeria, in in Israel, like everywhere, in Taiwan, because they all are praying. This is not about Trump, this is about us. This is about we the people, and this is about the fate of democracy and our constitution. And once. If we lose this, and if we lose our country, we will start, we'll just have to start from scratch, of, and that will take a lot more, like, that will be a lot more difficult. Do you think that we will be living under a fascist, communist uh, uh, society? So, yeah, it's also incredibly hypocritical, and they try to use reverse psychology and say, oh, just because our group is Black Lives Matter that we care about black lives, or just because our group name is anti-fascism, Antifa, that we're anti-fascist. That's just a name to get people tricked into joining and thinking, oh, we're doing something good. And that all stems from this virtue signaling PC culture. And now it's becoming like Nazi Germany, where if you say something politically incorrect, you're disappeared, you're, um, you're canceled, you're um, outcasted. And that's what they're trying to do to Trump supporters, to patriots. And they don't even want to have a conversation with us, where we aren't trying to have, a, like, of course we're going to argue, but we're not trying to have a civil war. The war is not with amongst each other. The war is about taking charge and taking control of our democracy again and getting rid of the swamp and getting rid of these corrupt politicians in the deep state and cleaning up Congress in America so we can finally have people who represent us and people who work in our interests. And that's, that's draining the swamp in the left and the right.